Not, not in America. Good morning. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Good morning. Good morning, everybody who is online. Yes. Good morning. And we are waiting for everyone who is in person because people having their homestead kick out right now and they're uh, talking and eating good food. So we welcome everyone from the atrium <laughs> <laughs> to, <laughs> to Vining. I don't know if you can hear us there. Maybe someone can call all the people like Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> um, yes, if you're here in the room, uh, we're yes. glad to have you. Hello, guys. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> thank you, Miss Victoria. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So while people are coming, uh, I'm just going to share my testimony from the past couple weeks. Um, so I've been having like a mind, a lot of mind struggles and a lot of mind struggles in my mind <laughs> and uh, it really affected on my physical health and I had a severe back pain for a week and at one at one moment I just started to sing this song that we're about to sing um, and this song is actually like prophesying into to the spirit and so I was singing this song for a day and I was talking to my soul and my spirit to calm down and to trust the Lord. Yeah. I was speaking the truth yeah. about the Lord. I was speaking the truth about His faithfulness to me. And that was the case. The case wasn't in my healing. And some, like sometimes it can happen in our life, maybe like in your situation right now. The case is not in the problem. The case is in your mindset and your thinking about this problem right now. So like all that it takes is just take your thoughts and your heart into the right position with the Lord. Yeah. And when I did that, the Lord healed me on the next day. That's and I felt so much better. So Bible says that for God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, yeah. Yeah. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah. And right now, I just want to encourage you to pray over yourself and over your situation and speak the truth. Speak the love, the power, and sound mind over yourself and over your family, over people around you, your friends. Just think about the situations in your life and think about what truth they need, what truth your mind needs right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you, you don't want to give us fear. You don't give us the fear. It's not true about us. Thank you, Lord, that we have the truth. Thank you, Lord, that we have foundation in you. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust you because you have the best for us. Lord, and we just ask you today that you would work on our mind, that you would speak to us, speak the truth through this music, through the word. Just Holy Spirit, speak what you think about us. Speak what you think about our health, our job, our situation, our family. We need your truth. We need your word, Lord. Feed us today, Holy Spirit. In the chaos, you are the peace. In my suffering, you hear with me. In the darkness, you never leave. God of mercy, you're walking with me. I surrender anxiety. All this darkness has to flee. In this moment, you steal the key. This is the gift you have given to me. So my for the spirit of fear. A sound mind so that I can see clearly. A sound mind, your spirit is here. A sound mind, a sound mind. Where 
where we meet in the presence of my enemies. I will listen and I will feast on every word you are speaking to me. I remember who you are. You're my fortress and my God. I will stand in authority. In Jesus' name, all this darkness will flee. It's sound my for the spirit of fear. It's sound my so that I can see clearly. It's sound my your spirit is here. It's sound my it's sound my sound my sound my for the spirit of fear. It's sound my so that I can see clearly. It's sound my your spirit is here. It's sound my your sound blood washed over me command my soul awake arise use the breath to prophesy i prophesy prophesy over yourself say heal deliver me jesus blood jesus blood washed over me command my soul awake arise use the breath to prophesy i prophesy you say So 
rising sun to the setting same I will praise your say from the rising from the rising sun to the setting same I will praise your from the rising from the rising sun to the setting same I will praise your name great is your great is your faith likes when you're singing.
I sing your song today, I will sing, I will sing all the goodness of God. To worship you, I lay, cause to worship you, I lay, I lift to worship you. That's my purpose for every day. Oh, to worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Only you, even when I don't understand. Oh, to worship you, I live. Oh, to worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Through my pain, through my pain, to worship you, oh, to worship you, I lay through my sorrow, to worship you, I live, I live, to worship you, mm. even when I exhausted, to worship, oh, to worship you, I live, say to worship, to worship you, I live, I live, to worship you, oh, to worship you, I live, to worship you, I live, I live, to worship you, sing your song today.
speak the truth to guide us. Oh, we want to know your heart. We want to know the truth. We want to know what you think. We want to know how you see. Open our eyes. Show us your glory. Yeah. Open our eyes and show us your glory.
you reign, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. It's the power yours. You reign, Yeshua. Every name, every tongue will confess. Every knee will bow at the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord of all. Lord of all, Lord of all, Lord of all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with all of heaven.
name that's above every other name. You're the name that's above every other name. Lord God, we worship you in this place. We worship you in this place, Lord Jesus. Before the rocks cry out, we will extol your name, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are so worthy, Lord God. We lift up a mighty praise to you, Lord Jesus, for your name is to be magnified, Lord God. Rain down your presence, rain down your spirit, Lord God. Move in a holy way, Lord Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit come with passion and fire. Give us a fresh wind and a fresh fire, Lord Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Worthy is your name. King of all the ages. Our rock of refuge. Our bright and morning star. We just lift your name. Praise the Lord of heavenly host, the one who was and is and is to come. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Spheres changing now. Cause the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. Cause the Spirit of 
you are enough. You are enough. You're welcomed in this place, Lord. You're welcomed in this holy presence. Move, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. Let heaven be made in this room. Through the unity of your children, may your spirit rest in here. You said when two or three are gathered, and we have more than that, Lord. You are in this room. You are in this room. Lord God, I, I thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. just gonna wait on you we're just gonna wait on you because you are enough because you are you are enough because you are you are enough there's nothing that I'd rather be You. 
seems tough. You are, you are enough. Oh, you are, you are enough. I won't be in a rush. You are, you are enough. You are, you are enough. 
another word was not preached from this stage today, this would have been enough. Because you are enough. You're enough for us. Your presence is enough. You don't need me. You don't need these instruments. You don't need these lights. You don't need this live stream. You, you, don't, you don't need it. It's just you. We just need you. Lord God, forgive us for when your presence is not enough for us. When we feel like we need something, we need to worship plus something or someone else. We just need you. You're enough, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for meeting your people, for meeting your children, that there was an encounter in this room. We just want to sit at your feet. Hearts are tender before you, Lord. Please dwell in this room. Please dwell in this place. We're not leaving your presence. We thank you, Lord. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Well. Saying hello to your neighbor is like, I don't want to talk to you right now. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. I'm talking to my dad. If, if that was a new experience for you, 
and it might be for some of you in the room, that's typically what happens when the spirit just wants to control it. It's just all about him. And I know some of us, we come to church and we go through the routine and we're like, all right, pastor, just get to the sermon. But my words are not enough if you don't have an encounter with Jesus. What I have to say will never be enough. It'll be like a drop in a great lake. It just won't be enough. But when you encounter Jesus, when the Holy Spirit comes and grabs a hold of the room and grabs a hold of your heart, It'll always be enough. It'll always be enough. So you don't need to listen to the next great sermon or the next great podcast. You just need an encounter with Jesus. And nothing else. If you guys... Um, what's your name? Eli? Oh, that's a cool name. Um, can I share something real quick with you? Just a few words, but just like kept seeing you in my head and I feel I think that the father is just wanting you to know he sees you Mm. and he knows you Mm. and you're his and I had this picture of like his hand it was really big and just like scooping you up almost like a child and like holding you like in his hands like that just for him to know he sees you and he knows you I don't want people to, if you get, this shouldn't weird you out. That's the thing. It's like, for some people, this is awkward. But that's because we've been so conditioned to the American church to believe, like, I come in, I sing a couple songs, I listen to a sermon, he makes me feel good about myself, or makes me feel worse about myself, and then we leave. (laughs) But here in his presence, it does both. It's this beautiful connection with the father that he corrects rebukes and lifts up and exalts all at the same time all in the same time and I, and I sense like sometimes he's like what are you in the rush for better is one day in my courts better is one day in my presence and thousands elsewhere I could tell you right now the next thing you are about to do it wouldn't be as great as what happened just now It's not going to be as great. I don't care what football game, sports, athletic thing you're participating in. It's not as great because they don't really care about you. The next lunch you're about to have, it's not going to be as great. It's not as sweet. Unless this this presence is, is maintained, it's pursued. It's not. I'm not saying to not enjoy those things. I'm saying this is way better. This is way better. God, forgive us for rushing. Forgive us for going through this routine. Good Lord, forgive us. You're so merciful that you even put up with us. You're so good that you desire to dwell in here. God, forgive me. When I come with my agendas and I come with, forgive me. Thank you, Lord, that we're a church that can do this. Thank you, Lord, that we're a church that we can sit here and just say, no, 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 you are, you are enough. There's no schedule. You are enough. There's no timesheet that I'm bound by. Online people, we love you. We wish you were in the room. I never want to get boring of of your presence. I never want to get bored of your presence. I never want to get bored of just tearing in your presence. He's enough. He's enough. He's enough. Worship team, you can stay up here if you want. You can go down if you want. I'm going to preach. I could walk around you. I could whatever. I'm going to preach. I can't preach long. If you you get hit. 
no, no, no. Because you are, you are amazing. I was, I just, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I don't even feel like preaching anymore. Because you are, you are amazing. Amazing. Because you are, you are amazing. If that's all you get out of church, you've gotten enough. You are, you are amazing. No, y'all could play that holy, holy thing in the background. Just hold down that sustain pedal and let it rock. Because you are, you are amazing. the times that we've taken this for granted. I'm sorry. I couldn't do it, y'all. I couldn't do it. I couldn't go to a church where they just rush past this. I couldn't do it. I wish someone would tell me we have to get to the next thing. We ain't got nowhere to go. I ain't got nothing good to preach after that. It's just words. It's just like, yeah, this is just words. And, and yes, they're from the Father, but <sighs> what more can I say? What more can I say? To try and convince you like what you just experienced was his personal presence. What can I say? What words can I say? It won't be enough. I pray for every Sunday that where you're like, Pastor, what you said was good, but it wasn't the best thing about church today. Like, we're glad that you prepared. We're glad that you wrote a sermon, but that wasn't the best thing. The best thing today was I got to ex encounter my father today. Because you are, you are amazing. Can't even focus on my sermon. I think I keep on staying in that hymn because I got to speak to the part of me that thinks he's not. There's a part of me, just like there's a part of us, that wants to lie to us and say he's not enough. And so as I sing that, it just pushes that away. It goes, you are, you are amazing. But what if he doesn't come through? Because you are, you are enough. But what if it's late? Because you are, you are enough. 
But what if it doesn't look like the way you planned it? Cause you are, you are enough. But what if it all hurt? Cause you are, you are enough. What if it leaves you broken? Cause you are, you are enough. But what if it leaves you lonely? Cause you are, you are enough. What if you look embarrassed because you are, you are enough. You are, you are enough. What if you lose everything because you are, you are enough. You are, you What if the doctors say it's incurable? Because you are, you are enough. What happens when the marriage doesn't work out? Because you are, you are enough. What happens when they abandon me? Because you are, you are enough. They shame me because you are, you are enough. What if I get lost because you are, you are enough. You are, you are enough. You are, you are center you are you are enough you win when life's evil you are you are enough well we worship leader stand up here and they say sing the song of your heart like that's a song of my heart right now it's a song of my heart because he has to be enough I have a whole written sermon man it was I can't even focus on this thing. Like, it just <laughs> it seems like scattered words on a page now. I'm like, what sense does this make? Who wrote that? You know, we live in a world where the church believes. This is the church, that it's Jesus and something else. And it's just Jesus, all by himself. He stands alone all by himself. He doesn't need anything else. He's just enough all by himself. Like, sure, we can say Jesus and whatever. But I always find that whenever we add something to Jesus, it doesn't make him Jesus. It's just Jesus. Therapy is good. All, that's, all these ands are, could be good, but it's just Jesus. He's enough. He's enough. Those things are good. They're not bad. They're not bad things. But if he's not enough to me right now, if he's not enough, if he's not my beginning, my end, if he's not my everything, if he doesn't sit um, enthroned on my heart, if he doesn't run my marriage, if he doesn't run my finances, if he doesn't run my parenting, if he doesn't run my job, if he doesn't run any of that, 
Everything I do is frivolous. It's in vain. I don't want to labor in vain. He's enough. He's enough. He's enough. Holy Spirit, help me preach this in 15 minutes or less. We know that's a feat for your young servant here. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. All right, I'm going to trim out a lot of stuff for this sermon. So if you sit at the end of this and you're like, that made zero sense, you need to spend more time with the Holy Spirit. (laughs) That's all, because I'm going to try my best. Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me, some, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine is on a journey and has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children already and, and I are already in bed. It's like, well, you're not in bed because you answered the door. I can't get up and give you anything. But I tell you, even though he will not get up, and give you the, the, give you the bread because of your friendship. Yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. And knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. This week I want to talk about at the table... Persistent prayer. Or really, it's persistent faith. It's a faith that with shameless audacity, you go before the Lord and you ask and you make your request known. Some of you guys prayed for what just happened. God, let your spirit show up and just wreck us this morning. You see, it's at the table where your faith grows. It's at the table where your faith develops. It's at the table where your faith becomes persistent, that it's not not knocked down by anything and it doesn't waver. Oswald Chambers once said, perseverance is more than endurance. It's endurance combined with absolute assurance and certainty that what we are looking for is going to happen. Perseverance means more than just hanging on, which may be exposing our fear of letting go and falling. Perseverance is our supreme effort of refusing to believe that our hero is going to be conquered. I love that line. Our hero will not be conquered. Perseverance is the belief that my hero won't lose. My God won't lose. Jesus won't lose. When I persevere in prayer, that's me standing on the rock of salvation and saying, Lord, you will when I know I can't. And it's not going to fail because you are everything to me and you don't fail. You don't give up. You don't lose. So when I pray, I pray in the faith of perseverance, knowing that you will be with me and you will guide me and what I need for you to do will come through. And I could sing, you are, you are enough. Whether you're new seasoned or, or, you, or you, whether you are new or you've been walking with Jesus for a while, you will learn Well, you already know that there are times when you must be persistent in your prayer. There are a lot of us in the room who have stopped praying for things that we've been asking God for because to us they've already died or the time has already passed to us. How many of us, if we're honest, we feel like, oh, we're too old or that book has closed or that ship has set sail. There is no way that God can do it now. And so therefore we have stopped praying and petitioning to the Lord for it to happen. Come on. I know there's some of us in the room. I know I've done that. I know there were times where I was praying and expecting God to move and praying that God would show up and it didn't happen in the time span that I wanted it to happen. And so therefore, because it didn't happen in the time frame, it's never going to happen. And I've given up. I've given up on that prayer. I've given up on that vision. I've given up on that dream. We do one of two things. We give up and or then we begin to doubt what we heard from the Lord. 
We doubt. Doubt creeps in. Fear creeps in. Did I really hear that from the Lord or did my brain just want that? In the beginning, when the enemy tricked Adam and Eve, he didn't force them into sin. He didn't force them into rebellion. He questioned them. He questioned their motive. Did God really say not to eat from that tree? Some of us are being tricked right now. Did God really say to not do that? Did God really tell you that or did you tell yourself that to make yourself feel better? And some of you guys need to get back into the word and remind yourself what the Lord says. When he said you and your whole household, he said you and your whole household. When questions come, I pray that the the promises of, of the Lord availeth much in your life. No, he said that he will heal me. I heard him. I believe it. He said that he will rescue me. He said that this will not be the end, that this will not destroy me. He said it. He said it, that I prayed, and I keep, some of you guys are praying for your spouse right now. You've been praying for years. You've been praying for years. God, save them. God, redeem them. God, help them. And at some point, it seems to be getting worse and worse and worse. And you're like, God, are you working? Is it happening? But God is working. And even right now, he's working. And there's nothing that you can do but go to the Father and say, Lord, I'm bringing you this petition again. I'm bringing you this again. I'm going to persevere again. I know I've given up. Some of you the same with having a child. Some of you the same with starting a business. You've tried time and time again. But I realize once you stop praying, your efforts have died too. Don't you know prayer is a request to the Father? To totally and radically transform your imagination of life. It's a request to the Father, God, exceed my imagination. Because something in my flesh, in my sight, wants to tell me to give up. But Lord God, for some reason, every time I keep praying about this one thing, this vision that you give me keeps on coming up. So it must not be by accident. It must be alive somewhere in the spiritual. Even though in the physical it seems dead, there's something in the, in the spiritual that shows me a united family. There's something in the spiritual that shows me my spouse is coming back to the Lord. There's something in the spiritual that shows me you're going to save my whole family. There's something in the spiritual that I see this home that you've created. I can't give up on this prayer. I can't give up. I keep on having visions about it. I got to keep with this prayer. I'm going to, some of us need to come up in our spirit and in our soul. I am going to pray until it materializes from heaven to be on earth. I'm going to keep on praying until I see it. I'm going to keep on praying until I see it. That's where in the 2000s when everyone was coming up with a corny ac- acronym, PUSH. A- yeah, everyone remembers that. That's why you laugh. PUSH, P-U-S-H, pray until something happens. Some of us just put up one prayer and don't even care about it. We're just like, God, do this. But we don't want to give him the big things. God, do this. You know, that's why people pray with their eyes closed. I believe I love praying with my eyes closed because I could visualize eternity and not my circumstance. I can visualize God redeeming the very broken thing in me and me walking in wholeness and you walking in wholeness and you walking in peace. That's why I encourage you, pray with your eyes closed. Because sometimes you pray with your eyes open and you just allow your circumstance to defeat what's going on. Keep on bringing it before the Lord. You see, the thing is, we've become conditioned and and just in society and as people. If we ask someone something once, we've been told, like, don't annoy them. Don't bother them. You're bothering them. Don't bother them. Don't annoy them. They already gave an answer. 
And so we, we, and we take that, and, and our parents have taught that, well-meaningly so, right? I have kids who ask me the same thing over and over again, and I'm like, please stop asking me that question. Please. But because we've grown up in that, we've conditioned to go to our, do, do that to our father. Oh, surely God doesn't want me to pray this again. I'm bothering him now. What a lie. What a lie is that we go before the Father with the same prayer sometimes and the same petitions, and yet we allow ourselves or whomever to tell us, you need to stop praying about that. You're bothering him. You're pestering him. But didn't he say, let all the little children come to me? Didn't he say, if you have faith like a child, great is the kingdom of heaven for you. It's a childlike faith that when we go before the Father, we can say, God, I'm coming back to you again with the same thing. And I'm going to keep on coming back until I get an answer from you. He doesn't say have adult-like faith because adult-like faith don't work. It says in the parable to have shameless, audacious personality to be like, Lord, I'm coming to you for this. Because of your shameless audacity, because of your shameless audacity, you go before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm coming to you with this. Here I am again, back on my knees with these tears, with this cry, with this snot coming down my nose. I'm back here all over again. And I'm going to keep on coming back until you answer me. Write this down. This is very important. God will always answer those who maintain a persistent, shameless audacity in their prayer life. He will always answer them. If you have a persistent, shameless audacity in your prayer life, he will always answer you. Always. Always. We have been conditioned. See, here's the thing. God wants to give us the best, but we just want to settle for the least. God, his heart's desire is to give you the best, but we settle for the least. I want everyone to participate in this exercise right now. Everyone raise your hand. If you're, right? All right. All right. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. All right. Everyone's raising their hand. I said raise your hand. Is that the highest you can raise your hand? No. No. Some of us were right here. And for everyone in the room, that is not the highest you can raise your hand. Raise the highest. Raise your hand the highest that you can. Oh, so there was more to it. We have people standing up, so there was more, right? You see? Now you can put your hands down. That's how we pray sometimes. This is comfortable. This is not causing any pain. This is making everyone around me comfortable to see other people are raising their hand right here. So I'm just going to pray right here because you know what? It's not the best, but I, I can settle for this. I guess this will be okay. And so our prayer life is limp and it's weak because this is comfortable. But yet Jesus is saying, pray with your arms raised all the way up. Pray up here. Pray up here. Raise your hand all the way up. Because guess what? Now this up here, this is uncomfortable. This will start to build lactic acid in my shoulder and it will start to hurt. But you know what? I find that when I raise my hand as high as it can be, yes, it's going to hurt. Yes, it's going to cause pain. But God will see me. God's going to see this. God's going to say, oh, that's, that's a shameless audacity prayer I'm talking about. But we've been conditioned. That's why when I said raise your hand, there are a lot of us who are just like, I'm safe right here. I'm safe. I'm going to raise my hand right here. I don't want to make a scene. I don't want to do it too far. Because the truth is, if I raise my hand as high as it could, maybe what if everyone else is not doing it? Who cares if everyone else is not raising their hand high enough? Maybe they're not hungry enough. Maybe they don't need it enough. You see, I want to get around a bunch. I want to be a believer that anytime we need something from God, we're like, God, right here, right here. If you want to bless someone, bless me right here. Don't pass me by. I'm going to raise my hand for as high and as long as I can hold it because I want you to see it. I want my prayer life to be as loud and as high because I need an answer from you. People who don't want to get picked or don't need an answer, they keep their hand here. I'll keep my hand here. Because this tells me that we've been conditioned to ask our Father for just right here. And he's like, ask for here. 
Ask for here. Have the shameless audacity to believe that even though the marriage ended in divorce, that I could redeem it. Have the shameless audacity to believe that even though your children are wayward, I can bring them back. Have the shameless audacity to believe even though you are houseless, I can give you a home. Have the shameless audacity that I can rescue you from your depression. Have the shameless audacity that I can deliver you from anxiety. Have the shameless audacity that I can heal heal you from your blood pressure medicine, that I can heal you from all these things. Have this wild audacity to believe that I can. Raise your hand up all the way. Raise your hand up all the way. Do you know the very thing that will trigger you to raise your hand up all the way? Desperation. You get desperate enough, your hand will shoot up as high as it can be. And you don't care who sees you because you're like, Lord, I'm in need right now. I always find the desperate, when you're desperate enough for the move of God, revival happens. When you're desperate enough for the move of God in your life, you'll change, you'll adjust, you'll be like, God, I need to keep on holding my hands, and I'm going to keep on holding my hands up until you answer. It's the same way that Moses, when he was on the top of the mountain, it says as long as his hands were raised, Israel is winning the battle. And there are going to be times where your arms get tired, and you're like, God, I feel my arms coming down. I've been praying this time and time again. I feel my faith getting weak. And then you got two friends like an Aaron and her. As soon as your arms are coming down, they're going to pick them back and be like, no, 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 we need need you to win because when you win, we all win. So keep praying the prayer. Keep staying persistent. I'm going to hold your hands up. I know you're on the entire, but for some reason, when you stayed in the gap for your family, for your finances, for your future, when you stood in the gap and you interceded and said, God, I won't let my, the enemy have my kids. I won't let them have my job. I won't let them have this marriage. I'm going to stay with my arms high and heart abandoned. And God, I'm going to follow you. And I'm going to need some friends to come along aside of me and hold Hold my hands up because this prayer is getting tired. But I don't want to put them down until I've won. I'm not putting them down until you've won this battle. I am not putting them down until I see a breakthrough. I'm not putting them down. That's what the Lord wants. He says, don't put your arms down. And it's not that your arms give me power. Your arms just show your faithfulness. Keep your arms up. I know you're going to get weak and I know you're going to get tired, but keep your arms up. And I want to let you know you got to keep your arms up. You got to keep your prayer up. You got to keep your faith up, okay? Because when Jesus hung on that cross, not once did he pull his arm down. Not once did he put it, he needed his arm to be, I needed to rest a little bit. He kept them arms up because he's like, when I, if I can keep my arms up, you're going to keep your arms up as well. Follow my example. I kept my arms nailed to that cross. You can keep your arms nailed to heaven. Trust me. Believe me. Believe me that through this, I'm going to grow your faith and I'm going to strengthen you. And you will see it happen. Because it already happened in heaven. It just has to materialize on earth. You're going to see that it's going to happen. You're going to see that it's going to happen. That's why Jesus didn't give up. He didn't give up because he saw the redemption already happen in heaven. That's why he didn't pull himself off that cross. He saw redemption. He saw man filled with the Holy Spirit. He saw the end goal already. He's like, no, 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 I'm going to stay right here. I can call down all of heaven and destroy each and every one of you. But I'm going to hold my hands right here because greater is he that is in me. Because this spirit I'm giving you, it's going to be greater than what I did. The, the question I want to ask is, are we willing to be persistent when God's silence feels like a no? Will we stay persistent when God's silence feels like a no? I don't know why God stays silent. But I always find that two things happen when God stays silent. He doesn't push me away. It always triggers me to draw closer. You ever notice that for a leader or someone significant in your life who talks to you often, that their silence is louder than when they're speaking sometimes? And I believe that the Lord calls our attention when he's silent. Oh, I can't hear you. I can't, Lord, why can't I hear you? Even David in the Psalms, Lord, I can't hear you. Where are you? 
have you turned your voice away from No, no, no. Why did you go silent? Well, what happens when someone goes silent or speaks gently? What do we do? Someone goes, hey. No, no, no. You ever meet those people who talk super gently? Anyone? Right? You meet a person and they talk super soft like this. And you're like, I can't even hear what you're saying. What do people naturally do? I can't hear you. Speak up. I can't hear you. And I always find that when the Lord goes silent with us, our posture naturally leans into, "Uh uh-uh, I can hear you. Speak up. I can't hear you. And what do we do? When When we do that long enough, what does a person do? Oh, you can't hear me? Hold on, let's step outside so you can hear me. Anyone ever been to a concert in this room? It's so loud in here. Someone tries to talk to you and it just looks like this. And you're like, I can't hear a single thing you're saying. (laughs) And so what do they do? It's like, hey, let's go outside. Let's go outside. And I believe that the Lord does the same thing for us. It's like, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. And then you're like, you know what? I can't hear you because maybe I got to change where I am. I can't hear you, so maybe i got to change the situation that I'm in. Maybe I have to change my posture. Maybe I have to change how I'm listening to you. And so, you know, maybe I need to step out of this relationship because for some reason when I got in this relationship, I stopped hearing you. For some reason when I got into this business or into this job or into this promotion, I stopped hearing you. So maybe i got to step out of these things and maybe I can hear you again. See, it's the silence of God that lets me know. I mean, I mean, we all know this. We have friends, family members, loved ones, that their voice is so prominent in their life, they could walk into a crowded room and say our name, and we know exactly who it is. We know exactly who it is. Someone asked me, like, how do you know the voice of God and the voice over every other voice? Because it sounds just like my father. Not my earthly father. His voice just sounds holy. When the Lord is calling me to something, I know his voice because I've spent time with him. I know his voice so much that when he stops talking, I know when he's not talking. I know his voice so well that I know his voice from my voice. How do I know his voice from my voice? My voice is selfish. My voice sounds like an orphan. My voice always wants to gratify me, but the voice of the Father is always looking out for the sake of others. Y'all ever speak things that you're like, I don't have the intelligence or the spiritual capacity to ever repeat that again. I don't know where that came from. Right? You could be sharing the Lord with someone and you just quote a verse and you're like, I didn't even know I knew that verse. He still speaks if you're willing to listen. You think prayer time is just you talking to him? No. Prayer time should be, oh, he's talking back to me. I have actually, over the past couple months, rephrased. I don't have quiet times anymore. Quiet times, um, I, I don't love that term. I'm not condemning it. I'm just saying I don't love it. It just doesn't work in my relationship with Christ. So I don't have quiet times. I realize that what I've been having over the past couple months is intentional intimacy. And they're not quiet. They're very loud sometimes. Sometimes it's, it's just a lot of crying. Sometimes it's a lot of just openness. And a lot of the time it's me talking to God and then being quiet and him talking back to me. So it's intentional intimacy because intentional, intentional intimacy leads to a practice of presence. Right? In, when I have intentional intimacy with the Lord, I'm like, I never want to be your presence. I'm going to invite you to everything I do today. I'm going to invite you into my office. I'm going to invite you into this meeting with this patient. I'm going to invite you into this meeting with my boss. I'm going to invite you into this meeting with this customer. I'm going to invite you to this meeting with my wife, this talk with my wife, or this talk with my husband. I'm going to invite you everything that I do because I want to have intentional intimacy with, it, with you. You see, quiet time is good, but quiet time has been categorized and regulated, so it's going to start with this, I'm going to read a verse, and I'm going to end with this. And when I say amen, I stop listening to you for the rest of the day. But when I have intentional intimacy with you and I practice your presence, when I say amen, that's not the end of the conversation. It's the rise of awareness in my spirit of you in day-to-day movement. It's like, amen, I want to see you now. I want to see you now. 
But if you don't have intentional intimacy, you can't practice presence. Because you're not setting time aside to say, I want you to meet me. Intentional intimacy will always lead you into practicing presence because you're like, your presence was so sweet. How could I go days without it? You know, this little worship time that we had, and now that we're running over in church, that little worship time that we had, it didn't have to stop when I started preaching. It can continue throughout your, the entire rest of your Sunday where you're like, how could I just not be in his presence? How could I not invite him into this room? When I'm watching TV, when I'm with my kids, when I'm hanging out with friends. How do we respond to God when it seems like he's answering everyone else's prayers except yours? I get offended by that, right? And it's like this misguided offense. I get offended when I feel like God is answering everyone else's prayers and he's not answering mine. Anyone else get offended? Go ahead and lie and say no. Yes, you do. That's why you're still friends with your enemy on Instagram. Yes, you do. (laughs) That's why you're friends with somebody you don't like on Instagram, because you just want to see, like, how come they get to do this? How come they get to do that? And then we live in this place of comparison the entire time, and yet the Lord is like, what do you mean I'm not answering your prayers? You think God is just some drive through menu where you just put in your order and (laughs) pops out your microwavable burger, and you're just like, here you go. No, no, that's not my God. Typically, when he does things, it takes time. It's like mama's cooking. It's going to take some time. He's going he's gonna to set the whole table for you, too. When God is working on your prayers, don't get upset if he doesn't answer it just like that. Sometimes he does because he's that good where he's ahead of you. But sometimes it's like, this is going to take time. God, why is this prayer taking so much time To answer, you're blessing all of the people I don't like. You're blessing everyone around me. God, I've been praying for this time and time again, but you don't understand that every time that you've been been praying for, what is he doing? He's setting the table. For who? Your enemies. God, why are you setting the placemat out for my enemies? Because I want them to see me bless you. So this is going to take time. Because I want them to watch everything that I'm doing in your life. I want anxiety and depression and fear. I want to set the table for all of them because when I answer that prayer, it's going to blow them away. So sometimes he's just setting the table for those things that are trying to kill you. That's not even in the notes. That's that's Holy Spirit right there. If y'all saw my notes compared to what I preached, you'd be like, who is up there speaking? Because, whoa, look at your notes. I'm going to close skipping some stuff, but it's okay. We're going to turn to Matthew 15, 21 to 28. We're going to close with this. It says, I'm sorry, I'm going to rush through this. I'm sorry for, no, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm not, I got to stop saying that. Um, Matthew 15, 21. It says, leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Leaving that place. So Jesus left, and he went to the place of Tyre and Sidon, which are known as um, uh, Gentile cities, right? This woman is Syrophoenician. She's Greek. She's overall Canaanite. She, uh, she's not Jewish, right? Let's highlight that she's not Jewish. She is not a child of Israel. And yet she runs to him, and she says, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. And she is a Gentile. It's very interesting that Jesus tried to get away from people and he withdrew to the Gentile city. And even though who he was trying to deliver was not the Gentiles, but the Jews, yet the Gentiles couldn't help but run to him. I don't care who they are. I don't care what they believe. When you look like Jesus, they can't help but coming to you saying, can you pray for me? They can't help it. She was, she was so far from the Jewish faith, but she introduced him and acknowledged him as this one thing. She said, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. For someone who is not Jewish and knows nothing about the Jewish culture, she was sure calling out to him as if, she, as if he already saved her. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. She already put him above every other thing that she tried. And then she presents her problem. What's her problem? Lord, my daughter who is demon-possessed. 
is suffering terribly. You know what that says to me? Is that as a parent, she had a child who was demon-possessed, and she's like, I already went to my gods. That didn't work. I already went to the religious leaders in my thing, and that didn't work. I already went to friends, and they couldn't work. I went to Google. That didn't work. I went to doctors. They didn't work. I keep on going to these people, and they're not working. But I heard of you. I heard of you. I heard that you take the broken things and you make them whole. And you heal and you deliver. I heard of you. So guess what? You are my last option. So Lord, son of David, I've got a problem. I've been persistent. I went to everyone and everything else. And they couldn't fix anything. My daughter has a demon. I don't know what to do with it. I've never experienced something like this. I've never been through this. So someone's got to fix it. And as she runs up, it says, Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciple came to him and urged him, send her away. For she keeps crying out after us. Which made me laugh at the disciples. Because I'm like, they wasn't, she wasn't asking for y'all, Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's not us, it's more like him. She wasn't asking for y'all. And the reason why they wanted him to send her away is because they're like, if she comes any closer, she may defile us. She may defile us, she may strip us unclean. How many of us have been to churches where it's just like you stepped in the room and you felt like you defiled everyone? But let me show you what this, what this audacious, this shameless audacity looks like. He, they're like, push her away, send her away. She's a Gentile, we're Jews. We don't want her to defile us. And then it's, what I love, it says, in verse 23, it says, Jesus did not answer a word. Jesus didn't say anything to her. Jesus, son of David, have mercy. He didn't say a word. You know how many of us would have been offended already? Excuse me, Jesus, son of David. Mr. Jesus, son of David. I'm calling you. He doesn't say a word. He doesn't say a word. And then the disciples also try to, you see, some of us get offended because God is silent sometimes. Why are you not answering me? What did I do to you? And then he answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. He's like, my, my ministry was to get Israel. Like, I, that's who I was sent to. Was he being rude? No. He just told her, like, I, I came here for them. The woman came and knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. So not only did she run, put him as a savior, she goes before him and she goes, Lord, help me. Even though he told her, I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Some of us, we, we would have seen the offense and we would have left. We would have been like, okay, I guess not for me, and walked away. How many of us is our blessing coming if we just get on our knees? How many of us, if the posture of our lives was on our knees and someone said, I was only, if the Lord says, I was only sent to the Lord of Israel, will we kneel down? He, do you see that any time that there's kneeling in the Bible, Jesus always changed his attention to that person who was on their knees? Ho ho homeless people in the Bible, people who were sick in the Bible, they would come and fall down at his knees, and now his attention was there. What if your breakthrough was just about you getting on your knees consistently and saying, Lord, help me? He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Who would have been offended there? Me. He's like, I'm the bread for Israel. It's not right that now in this, when he says dogs, he's not talking about a mangy vermin animal in the street. He's talking about a lap dog at that time. It's not good for me to take their food and give it to the dogs. Like, uh, I was here sent for the children of Israel. Like, they were my main focus. And if it was me, if I was written into this story, I would have got up and walked away. This man just called me a dog. I don't know who he think he's talking to. I don't know why he just called me a dog. 
You see, but when you're desperate for something, you can see past all the offense. All the perceived offense, you see past it because you're like, I need you. I need you. You see, some of us are not desperate enough, and we're so offended by Jesus and his words that we're like, I can't stay here. Aren't you desperate for healing? Aren't you desperate to be renewed? Aren't you desperate to be made whole, but yet his words offend you? Jesus says it. Blessed are you who stick with me even through the offense of me. Some people got offended by him. You call yourself the son of God. But she was so desperate for healing, even with a perceived offense, because I don't believe the Lord offended her in that vernacular for that time. Even though she could have taken it and been offended, she goes, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not even going to let that offend. I'm not going to let that offend me. Some of us, we've given up on the church because of perceived offense. Some of us, we've given up on friends and family because of perceived offense. Some of us, the people that we've been praying for, we've given up on because of perceived offense. And if you were just desperate enough to see their salvation over your emotions, maybe they would come to Jesus. Some of us have put our emotions above the salvation. They offended me, so I'm not talking to them. And the Lord is like, but I've sent you to them. If you can't reach them with my Holy Spirit, who else am I going to send? But we're so offended and we retreat and we pull away. Blessed are you who ministered the gospel over offense. I know what you said was offensive, but your salvation is so much more important than how I feel. Because we both can feel good in eternity when you come to Jesus. She goes, yes, it is, Lord. Verse 27. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And what does Jesus say? Women, you have great faith. You have great faith. Your request has been granted. You see, this Gentile woman understood. Jesus, I know what you just said, but guess what? Even a crumb of abundance from heaven is enough for me. Even a crumb of healing is enough for me. Even a morsel of renewal is enough for me. As long as it's from your table, it will always be enough for me. Even if it's just a little bit. Even if it's just a little bit, that will satisfy me. You see what we experienced early today in worship? It was just a little bit of heaven. That's why we're all sitting here so full and satisfied. Even if you just give me a little bit, even if it's just a morsel, even, yeah, even if it's just a small, little, insignificant thing, even the slightest crumb can bring healing. It's just a little bit. And then he says, what great faith. And her daughter was healed at that moment. The beauty of the story is that Jesus, though he came for Israel, extended his mercy and grace towards Gentiles. And we could see that as a precursor that, that he didn't only come to save Israel, but he came to save everyone. Notice that even above the disciples, she understood how faith worked. She understood, y'all can say what you want. You can say whatever you want. Jesus, you said you're here. Okay, I understand what you said. But I'm not leaving here until you bless me. I am praying this prayer until you bless me. I am going to continue to pray for my spouse until you bless me. I'm going to continue praying for a job until you bless me. I'm going to continue praying for my family until you bless me. I'm going to keep, I'm going to stay here. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care how anyone tries to push me away. I don't care what offensive words they may use intentionally or unintentionally. I am not leaving this posture of worship. I'm not leaving leaving this posture of petition. I'm not leaving this posture of prayer until you bless me. I'm not going anywhere. I 
messed up. I'm sorry, kiddo. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of us. We got offended because God answered someone else's prayer. We got offended because he got quiet. But that's no reason to get offended. It's just more of a reason to lean in. God, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here. Until it happens, I'm going to stay here. I guess I want to leave us with, are you willing to stay in the posture of petitioning until your father says, I hear you. What great faith. You stayed and, you stayed and waited for me. Even when everything looked like you should have given up. You stayed. And because of that, I'm not going to give you a crumb because a crumb was for those who are outside. And since you're my child, I don't have to give you a crumb. I'm going to fix you a whole meal. You got the whole plate. Wow. What would it look like if we just had a couple of believers to stand in the gap for this generation and say, God, you can't have my generation. I don't care how old we are. You can't have my generation. And you can't have my kids. And you can't have my family and my friends. I'm going to stay in this gap. Does everyone receive that today? Let's close. If you guys don't mind standing with me, we're going to pray. Um, people who are going to pray, could you come up? I want you guys to know that there are people up here who want to pray with you. You may be at a place where you need someone to stand with you in your faith and just, and just go to the Lord with you. That's what they're here for. Don't take this for granted. Don't take this for granted. Tomorrow is not promised. We could, why don't you pray for today for the thing that you've been putting off for for a lifetime? And let someone pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your faith. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, that you're not offended by a request over and over and over and over again, but you draw close, you draw near to us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that your spirit broke out in here, and we ask that it continues to break out through the rest of the week. Jesus, I pray right now that you give us bold faith to keep on praying and keep on believing until something happens. And we'll give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Amen.